love doing comedy, y'all. I really do. I've been doing this for a decade now. Feels like a while. Uh, prior to doing comedy, I did pageants. Right? Did that. Did beauty pageants for a while. My parents had me when they were teenagers, and I grew up in South Georgia, so that's why I did pageants. Okay? <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. Don't judge me. I'm a feminist now, but listen. I had to pay for college somehow. Okay? I did pageants for a long time, but I love the transition from like pageants to stand-up comedy. It's great, it makes my life a lot easier. Like now I don't have to, you know, care about world peace anymore. Um, and I get to keep all the food I eat, so I like that. It's probably my favorite part, to be honest. Um, here's the thing though, I've been missing my pageant bod lately, okay? Gained some weight during the pandemic. Who else gained some weight? You're not welcome here. Leave. I've, uh, I've been missing my pageant bod. I've been wanting to uh, lose some LBs, and it's crazy, like, the responses that you get from friends. Like, my friends that were my age, um, they started saying, you know what, I love that journey for you. And that's when I realized that I love that journey for you is the modern day bless your heart, okay? <laughs> Because they're like, bitch, we know exactly what you're not going to do, and it's lose weight, all right? <laughs> now come with us to bottomless mimosas. You know you want some, all right? But then because of this class, like, I know a lot of, uh, like, Gen Zers. I know these younger gals, and they hate it when you talk about wanting to go on a diet. They can't stand it. They get so upset. Like, you got to love your body. I love it for what it is. Don't eat your body. Don't try to lose weight. Diet's a bad word. And I'm like, let me tell you something, okay? I went through puberty in the 90s. Um, I used to do pageants. I have hated my body longer than you were alive. <laughs> the longest relationship I've ever had is with hating my body. So I don't need your little input, okay? Born in the 2000s, I don't need that. I don't need you around, honestly, you can leave. If you were, okay? I, uh, I don't know, the second longest relationship I've had, though, outside of hating my body is, uh, is with my husband. I'm married. Thank you so much. I love him. I love him and his body. That's fun. I love being married. I love to tell people that I married my best friend. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. I'm like, I'm marrying my best friend. Um, I don't mean it, but I <laughs> say it. Because it sounds good. He's not my best friend, OK? Um, he's a friend. <laughs> At best. He's not... Not even a good friend, alright? He's an alright friend. He's there all the time. I have a real best friend. Uh, she's way cooler than he is. She's been around way longer. She knows all my secrets. And uh, she has never begged me to call her daddy, so... <laughs> She's winning at this point in the friendship race. That's for sure. She's also never tried to stick it in my ass. So she's a better friend, okay? Friends don't do that to each other, all right? Any men in here who've been with a woman who's like, oops, wrong hole, you know exactly. You know exactly what hole that was. You can see it, I can't. Oh, I me. Are you down? I'm not. <laughs> no, stop trying to force it. Stop trying to make that happen. I... I love it though. I love being with my husband. He's a great guy. He's fun. Um, he, uh, I remember when things were getting serious, when we were going from like dating to like things were getting serious, and I was like, oh no, if he asks, if he asks me to marry him, I'm going to say yes, you know, because he's, because he's my soulmate, you know, or he's, <laughs> You know, the first one who's ever asked. So I knew. I knew that I needed to say yes, you know, because I was approaching 30 and I didn't own anything of value. And I was really looking forward to owning some jewelry that wasn't from Target. So I was ready to say yes. And, uh, and here's the thing. I remember, like, fantasizing about that, that dream ring that I would get one day, you know? I was dreaming about it, I was fantasizing about it, and uh, next month we will have been married for four years. Um, thank you so much, thank you. And I am still fantasizing about what that dream ring would look like. 
It's not this one. I don't know why I hold it up. You can't even see it. Um, there's a diamond in it. That's what he said it was, so we'll go with that. Not real sure. I can tell uh, the energy changed in the room. I can tell some guys got real butt hurt, as they say, about that. They're like, mm. I know guys get bothered when I make that comment because I said it the other day on stage and a dude yells out from the back because it's always a dude who yells out from the back. And he's like, hey, he worked hard. <laughs> and I'm like, he could have worked harder. Um, <laughs> and you don't know him, so <laughs> relax. Because he spends all his money all right, it's just not on me. And that's my bad, okay? I should have asked more questions, all right? I might have mentioned I was a feminist way too many times while we were dating, okay? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. He spends his money on mountain bikes, that's what he's into, okay? Uh, he's really into mountain biking, and uh, I know we're like in the city, and you're like, what's that, is that like a bird scooter? No. When I told my friends that he was into mountain biking, they were like, oh my god, is that like motorcycles? That's hot. And I was like, no, that would be hot. Um, and he's not into motorcycles at all. He's into bicycles. <laughs> that he's the motor on. Okay, not as hot, not as hot. Also, these mountain bikes cost a lot of money. They're not cheap, folks, all right? This isn't your huffy, okay? <laughs> These things are very expensive. And I was down for two bikes, two human people in the house. I was like, that's enough bikes. I was not ready for the fleet that he needed to purchase, okay? He bought a whole bunch of bikes. He tries to justify all the bikes to me. He's like, babe, hear me out. This one over here, this one's better for uphill. This is better for downhill. This is an e-bike. This one over here is a hard tail. It's good for jumps. This is better for roots and rocks. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Because you're a one man with one ass. I don't know what he's doing on the weekends. I don't know he's heading up to Woodstock, Georgia, taking all his bikes up there, setting himself up like a redneck relay race. <laughs> Every mile, he's like, got some more roots coming up here. Got to switch bikes, hold my beer. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. All I know is that every time I walk into the, to, into the shed at the house, I just see six better engagement rings <laughs> with tires on them. That's what I see. <laughs> I guarantee you none of those bikes let him get away with that special thing I reluctantly let him do twice a year. So... <laughs> Bullshit. Oh, man. Clearly I'm talking about anal, obviously. I... Listen, this is not a clean show, okay? Here's the thing. Uh, and those of you who are like, oh my god, you did anal? I didn't. I didn't do it enough. I know that. That's for sure. Um, if I did, you'd be able to see my ring from the stage. Um, <laughs> didn't do it. So really, this whole set is just a PSA for any lady who's re waiting to receive a ring from a dude. Just do it. All right, just do it. Just a couple times. You don't have to do it a lot. Listen, hear me out. Because it wasn't until after I got my ring that I remembered something we all learned in science class, and that's how diamonds are made. Remember? The stronger the pressure, the bigger the diamond, okay? It only hurts at first, folks, okay? All right? But a tiny diamond, that hurts for a lifetime. So, just do it. Just do it. I work for Nike now. I, 